I'd love to see all of you join us tomorrow at noon for our virtual networking. And that's where we're, we're taking time to develop relationships. And I would love to hear Maria Grove be there and talk about her new business tomorrow and um, many other new faces on here. So uh, please join us on Wednesday at noon and, um, and then back again on Tuesday, this time 9 a.m. Topic Tuesday is just a great way to, to um, just develop skills and, and uh, listen to some amazing speakers. Today we have Nicole Finch. I'm gonna let Nicole introduce herself. She's an amazing young woman. Um, I know she focuses on, on uh, mindset and has multi-talents. And Nicole, why don't you take it away and, and jump in and introduce yourself and it's all yours. Sure, well, thank you, Mike, for that. Um, and, and thank you, Mary Ellen, um, for asking me to speak here. I'm very excited to be here this morning, talk to you all. So yeah, as, as, as Mike and Mary Ellen have all said, I'm a, I call myself a productivity and work mindset trainer. And, and basically what that means is I'm on a mission to help us redefine productivity so we can beat burnout and think of a new way of working. Find more fun in the chaos, as I like to say, because life is chaos. And I'm about helping us find more fun in it and being able to be productive or even, even become more productive without all of the, the burnout by doing some little tips and tricks. And my approach is taking these big concepts and making them really tangible and practical for us to use. One of the, the biggest things that, that has bothered me when I went on this journey to figure out there's gotta be a better to way to work. I was looking for some answers. I was feeling burned out in my job and I thought there has to be a better way. And as I began that, that journey, I found a lot of different, er different pieces of advice along the lines of just change your perspective. Oh, if that dresses you out, just change your perspective about it. And I thought that's not helpful. So I wanted to find something else that would be helpful. And I think that the idea of like changing your perspective, really you have to bucket it down into smaller steps. So I, I kind of went on this journey of looking at, you know, how the brain works, you know, the neuroscience, how the mind works, psychology, how the body works even. And there's got, I'm thinking like, there's gotta be a better way we can work. And what I found is there, there definitely is. The way that we've kind of adapted to work in this new like age of technology and everything's at your fingertips, there's more asked of you, so you feel you need to do more. And there's a better way that we can be working that's more aligned with how we are made up as people. And that has now become my mission to, to share that. And so today I will share three tips with you that I always start with as a kind of a foundation for whenever I do one of these workshops. So I have done employee workshops, um, which of course don't happen as much at the moment because you <laughs> can't meet all in person, but I do, I am moving them to do virtual and I am working on some individual programs as well. Um, but these are the three tactics I'm going to share with you today that I think are the foundation for helping us to shift our mindset to be able to become more productive in a way that just feels more fun and more flowing and allows us to not be so burned out at the end of the day and ultimately get more done, accomplish more, be more creative, all that good stuff. And these are things that I talked about, you know, way before I even knew COVID-19 was a thing. And I think nowadays, now that we're more virtual, even as we start to move back into the office, I think the world of working virtually is probably going to continue for the future for, for at least a while, if not you know, for, for a longer time, now that we know better how to work more virtually and connect more broadly with people. Like look, look at all the people that are on here right now, I have it on the gallery view. Um, and it's just really awesome to be able to all of us connect. And I think that this is probably something that's going to to continue. So I think that these tactics become even more important for a few reasons. So I think there definitely are some benefits from being able to work from home and having some more flexibility when it comes to like the work-life balance, right? I mean, now your work and life is kind of all the same, which can be good, but it also can be challenging, right? I mean, because now the lines are very blurred as far as where's work, where's life, you know, you're at, you're at work and you're trying to focus at work, but things at home are, are distracting you, or, you know, you're, you're at home and you really should be spending time with your family or just, you know, giving yourself a break, but then maybe you log into your emails or you have notifications or you just harder to log off. So it kind of becomes harder now to separate the two and allow yourself time for a break. Cause it really is important for us to have that time separate. Um, and then the other thing about working virtually and connecting with people virtually 
this is more on the psychology side, where when we're in person with someone, like our brain reading the communication from other people, words are only a small part of the communication and how our, our brain reacts and reads people. It's a lot of the body language, even the energy. Um, this is really cool tidbit that I learned when I was studying the physiology of the heart that the, your heart could influence the brain waves of people around you and vice versa. Their, their heart, their, the pulses that it's giving out can influence your own brain waves. So that's a whole other deeper level of communication that's happened that we're not even aware of. And so when we're virtual, when we're, oh, first of all, when we're over the phone, you can't even see anyone. All you hear are the words. So only a small part of what your brain normally uses for its communication skills is being, is, is coming through. And even when we're virtual, you can kind of see some of the, you know, some of my body language. I'm Italian, so I use my arms a lot. So it's probably a little bit easier to see all the movement. Um, but even it's still not quite there. And of course, you, then you don't have that energy exchange between the heart and, and the brain for the other part of the reading. And what that means is your, your brain is still trying to make all those connections. It's still trying to do that. It's still trying to read things. It's still trying to put all the pieces together. And that can be exhausting when you don't have all the pieces there. So we're trying to work overtime to overcompensate. And so if you feel like you felt more tired recently from working from home, I mean, partly it's probably like the, the mental drain the mental health strain from what's going on in our world today. But also it's your brain working overtime, trying to understand, trying to communicate, trying to fill in those gaps that are missing from a virtual communication that you know normally it's a, it's a lot easier and more natural so it's trying to make up for that and so i think that some of these tactics here make it even more important to help your brain kind of reset help it to adapt um, and help it to be able um to, to keep the energy up throughout as you go throughout the day so that you don't become drained from this this new world of working in this more in this kind of virtual sense so with that as the backdrop, um, I'm going to talk about these, these three key tactics that I think are really important for us. Um, and I always start with these, and they're, they're going to sound simple in some ways. And the reason is because, like I said in the beginning, I, I like, I've break, broken down these bigger concepts into smaller bite-sized steps that are much easier for us to implement at one time. You know, saying change your perspective is a kind of a loaded statement. There's a lot that has to go on there. Whereas these small steps you can incorporate into your day, sort of in, in, you know, into your schedule as it makes sense. And just because they're simple doesn't always mean they're easy because it will take a bit of like flexing a muscle, so to speak, and changing how we work. Because the way that we've been taught to work through school, through like just our employment, all of that stuff is more in like the industrial age type of work you know productivity equals more things done you know things that are going all the more the widgets made all the you want to check things off the list it's it's a, a different way of of working which made sense then but now that we're more in this intellectual virtual age productivity doesn't always mean how many things you crossed off the list and so we need to keep that in mind and keep in mind that it's going to take a little bit of time for us to learn this new way of working but once we start to get a hang of it once you start to incorporate it these things you'll notice uh, impact very quickly. So that's why I'm very passionate about them. Even if they sound simple, sometimes the simple things are harder to do because they're just as easy not to do and they're gonna have a really impact on your day. So I'm really excited to share these, these, these three tactics um, for you. Before I go into them though, does anyone have any questions or comments or anything on what I've shared so far? And feel free to type in the chat too, actually. It's a little chat box. I can always respond as we go through. So if you have anything that comes up, feel free to type I, in the chat. This love your Laura. passion. <laughs> this is Laura um, Messenger. I am not using my video, but I've read about entrainment of the human heart when you're in person with other people your one person's heart will actually assume the rhythm of another's. Mm -hmm. And um, so speaking to what you were talking about with the brain responding to the heart, I know human hearts actually will synchronize to one another in the presence of others. Yes. It's fascinating too, because it kind of explains that whole idea. First of all, I think it kind of explains the idea of an aura, but also it explains when sometimes you like meet up with someone and someone just gives you, it just makes you feel good. Like that person just makes you feel good. 
or you might get like the creeps from somebody. And I <laughs> totally right. feel like there's that, that is definitely a part of it of what you're feeling because you are physically feeling something because that is what's happening. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. I'll just add, I'll add to Nicole. Uh, this is Mike. I mean, you nailed it for me and our chaos wasn't so much virtual. Our chaos was just the whole shutdown and the, and the planning to reopen and, and our heart guided us. We shifted everything to focus on what our heart told us and it helped. It helped a lot. There was still plenty of chaos and I love your passion. I'm going to let you keep going. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. And I love that you said that too about the heart. I actually did a whole thing on the science of following your heart. Because oftentimes, so our heart actually has a little, this is, a little, this is kind of a little tangent, but I think it's important. A heart actually has a little brain in it, um, a little set of uh, cells that's similar to what's in the, in the brain. And it can actually think, so to speak, for itself, it can influence the brain. The brain can give the heart suggestions, but the heart can choose something different. It's very fascinating. Um, but one thing, like your heart often, because because it's, it's able to read and feel these impulses around it, and the brain does too, but the heart it's, it's different. And it, the heart is actually kind of the pendulum of your whole, of your whole body, so to speak. And so oftentimes you'll feel something before you really mentally think it. And our brains are, are, um, there's a lot of things that are influencing how we think the different beliefs, what we see, what have been raised. And so it can kind of cloud our judgment in a way, whereas the heart tends to know what's right, right away. And sometimes you get that gut feeling or that. And so I love that you said that, Mike, that definitely sometimes like your brain might try to talk you out of something. And if you feel this is the right thing to do. And in, a, in most cases, you know, it, it, it just might be if you feel that way versus, you know, what's maybe what you're saying up here. So thank you for, for sharing that. Sure. Um, okay. So the three, my top three steps, whenever someone asks me, oh, let's see, someone in the chat here, what do we have? Um, yes. Calling your best friend, talking through it. Sometimes you can't always you know, you don't always explain what you're feeling, but you know that you're feeling something. And so I think that's something that's important, especially as you go throughout your work day. In fact, like if you sometimes like, I think when we go through our busy days and we go from one thing to the next and the whole th day is just kind of crazy. And we sometimes don't stop to like, think, you know, I'm feeling uncomfortable. Something doesn't feel right. Or you know, I have this like tightness in my chest or this uncomfort. I feel like I'm not digesting, you know, something doesn't feel right. Sometimes just stopping and just giving yourself a pause, let the dust settle. You can kind of help to figure out what's bothering me right now. Cause you may not always realize what something came up. Like maybe there was some email that said something that bothered you in a way you didn't really realize. And, and sometimes, yeah, you feel it before you know how to explain it. And so it's really kind of important <clears throat> for your own productivity. Cause it's hard when you're distracted mentally, it's hard to then be productive, right. In your own work. So I think it's, that's really important to think about taking pauses. And so, in fact, that's actually my first tip is to take breaks throughout the day. Take a little sip. Um, I think it's really important to take a break. So our brain loses processing power after about an hour of focused work. So after you've been working on something for about an hour, your brain's processing power starts to, to dip. It needs a mental break. You know, it, it, it needs to kind of reset. It's been taking in a lot and it, you will vastly improve your productivity if you set your alarm on your phone or just set reminders or block your calendar in a way that you'll take a break every 45 to 60 minutes, about five to 10 minute break. And, and a break doesn't mean checking your emails or checking your voicemails or checking social media or the news, or it means, you know, getting up, walking away from screens. Cause again, the, the screens are also draining our brains. Um, they're actually influencing our, our minds in, in different ways. And it's, it's like your brain has to be constantly on when it sees, you know, what's on these computer screens with the light and all that stuff I'm sure you've heard about. Um, so taking a mental break, stepping away, go for a walk, get some fresh air, drink a bunch of water. We're all more dehydrated than we realize. Drink some water, take a mental break. These breaks can be really helpful because it gives, not only does it give your mind a chance to like kind of reboot in a way and reset. So when you come back to whatever you were working on, you're going to find that you're able to kind of make it through rather than pushing through, you know, those two, three hours, just trying to get the deadline, get it done. A five to 10 minute break is going to make a huge impact. And it also allows you to kind of take some time to stop and check in with yourself and kind of figure, okay, where am I at? What's how my day going? Um, and all that stuff. And so it's really, really important to give yourself that mental break, that physical break, you know, stretch. I feel like my hips have been a lot more sore lately because I think I've been sitting more than I normally do. So I've been 
starting to do this, you know, make sure I'm walking and stretching and doing more of that. Cause also when you move around, it helps to get things all moving and flowing and that will help your, your cognition as well. So you can keep things um, creative. Oh, and by the way, um, the studies have shown that being in nature helps your cognitive abilities as well. So getting outside, you know, through your little break, if you can, is an, is an awesome way um, to, to take that, that time to take a, a quick reset. I know it can be so tempting when you've got those deadlines to just like push through. And I actually know some people who have set alarms on their phone to go off every hour so they know, okay, I got to pause wherever I'm at. And you'll, but you'll notice a, a big difference um, throughout your day if you take those breaks. So that's, that's the number one tip. Which I think we think something we all could probably do a better job at, <laughs> especially as type A people. The second thing is what I call in my workshops the one thing, which is basically trying to focus on single tasking versus multitasking. We have a multi, well, I used to call this the multitasking pandemic, which now is <laughs> maybe I'll have to call it a different name now that we're in an actual pandemic. Um, but we have a tendency to multitask, and there's a few reasons for that. First of all, with our brands, like I said before, they, they started to be influenced by all the social media, all the different things. We get notifications on our phones. We got this, we got that. It's gotten used to constant stimulation. And so it almost like it doesn't know how to totally shut down. So taking breaks will help you with that. Um, also focusing on single tasking, doing one thing at a time will also help with that. Um, we need to kind of retrain ourselves how to just do one thing at a time. You know, even if you're standing in line for coffee, which maybe this made more sense before, we couldn't really go to coffee. Of course, now you sort of can. Um, we are on our phone rather than just taking some time to just observe and just see what's around us. And so doing that can also help you be better at focusing on things. Try to just take that, that time when you can, when you're driving, maybe just focus on just driving. Um, it can help to flex this muscle so you'll be able to single task more appropriately. And also multitasking is easy to do when you're on these calls and things like this because your brain's looking for something, something to connect to. Because again, like we're, we're trying to finish the communication circle. We're trying to connect to things. And so you're, it's, it's like almost overwhelming. So it's like, ah, I'll just, I'll look, I need to look at my phone. I need to look at this. I need to check these emails because I need something else. So give yourself the gift of trying to focus on one thing at a time. Schedule, you know, block your calendar. Say for this 30, these 30 minutes or this 60 minutes, whatever makes sense for your job, I'm going to only focus on this one task. I'm going to turn off my notifications. You know, I'm going to, if you use Outlook, you have a little thing that pops up in the corner. I'm going to turn that off. I actually turn that off and it's made my life much better. Because I know if I'm checking in every 30 minutes, like if I get an email, it's going to be fine. Like 30 minutes passed, you know, and you got to figure out what works best for you. If someone really needs me, they're going to, they're going to call me. And so I'm going to, I, I, I kind of block my time in the beginning of the day, figuring out how long the tasks that I want to take are going to take. I estimate them out. And then I say, okay, I'm going to focus on just this one thing at a time and put everything else aside. I'm not, I'll put my phone actually out of my view because even your phone, even if it's off, being in your peripheral vision will be a subconscious distraction because it's like subconsciously looking to see, you know, for that little candy, if someone's going to, a little notification to pop up. Um, so especially important as we go virtual to, try, to, to flex this muscle and it's going to take some practice. It's kind of like anything, like you got to, you, you could might not be perfect right away, but to give yourself that practice of doing that will vastly help you because you'll be much more productive. I'm sure we all can agree if you're focusing only on one thing at a time. So you'll be able to get that thing done more quickly. You'll be more focused and you won't feel this like chaotic feeling in your head of like uh, all the things going on. I feel like you're juggling in the air because you're like, okay, those things, I've written them down. Maybe they're over here. I'll get to them eventually. But right now, this is my main concern. So that's tip number two to, you know, to first go take your breaks. And then of course, chunk your time so you focus on one thing at a time and really make a conscious effort to practice that and to do that so that you can become better and better at it. And that's something that I'm very, very strict about at work. I have a, a full-time job as well. And I've, I've made it clear. I'm like, you know, I, I don't worry. If, if you send me an email, don't worry. I, I will see it in a half hour to an hour, but I'm going to focus on one thing at a time and it helps me to, to get things done more quickly. So I'm not working as late into the night as maybe some of my colleagues are who have not you know, yet seen the light. Um, and the third thing, which is possibly my favorite one, I call it position the transition. And so how many of you go through the day and maybe the, at the end of the day, you, you, maybe, this is, maybe this isn't every day, maybe some days, at the end of the day, you feel like you were really busy that day, but you can't quite remember all the things you did. Like you knew you were running around, 
you knew you were going everywhere, but you're like, ah, oh, but like I was doing this and I did this. I don't even know what I did today. I was just so busy. And it's just kind of, everything just kind of flows together. And you, and you brought, you know, you had this stressful thing happen in the morning, which then impacted the thing that happened in the afternoon. And your whole day is a mess. You get to the end of the day, you're totally drained. You just want to sit down on the couch and have a glass of wine. And you're like, you're like, the, this was a ridiculously chaotic day. Well, position the transition is the idea of pausing in between your different tasks throughout the day to set kind of an intention, so to speak. So just kind of separate the different tasks, especially as you go from, especially now when you're working from home, going from home to work and work back to home. Because now if you're working from home, it's kind of all the same spots. So you kind of need to like make that transition a little bit more clear. And think about, you know, what, what goals do you have? Like, how do you want to show up? So if you're going between client meetings or going between tasks, even it's like, okay, this 30 minutes, I'm checking my email. And then this 30 minutes, I'm going to be working on this presentation. Kind of think, what do I want to bring to the table? You know, kind of what, what challenges might I come up with? How do I want to tackle them? And really like kind of be clear about what you want to do. And then as you go from home back to work and work back to home, I mean, I think it's so important as you sit down to work your work day, again, thinking about, what might come up for me today? How do I want to show up? What are my goals? What do I want to bring to the table? And when you go home, same thing, kind of take a moment to pause and breathe. First of all, we, don't all, we also don't breathe enough, like deeply. We need more action in these brains to help them work. And so when you come home, kind of pause, let the, let the work day sink away. And you come, when you come, even if it's like, you know, walking from the dining room table to the couch, whatever it might be, or outside, or, or think about how you want to show up for your family how you want to show up for yourself, for your pet, and just kind of, again, set that intention and to allow yourself to shift and, and give yourself time so that these, all these things don't all rush together. And this will then help you to be more thoughtful about your day, um, to feel a bit more in control with your day and not be juggling all the things so much. You can take those things you're juggling and kind of lay them down a little bit more nicely. So those are my top three tips. And they kind of, as you can tell, they all sort of go together. And kind of breaking it down. So number one thing is to take breaks throughout the day. Every hour, make an effort to get up, move, walk around, take a mental break. This one thing will make a huge impact on your productivity, on your mindset, on your energy throughout the day. Second is focus on single tasking. Give yourself the gift of just focusing on one thing at a time. Everything else will still be there. You can write them down, whatever you need to do. Put your sticky notes up, but give yourself the gift of one thing at a time and practice this when you're driving, when you're walking around, when you have a moment of pause, rather than looking at your phone or, or listening to the radio music, just practice every once in a while, just, just being where you are. And that will help flex that muscle to allow you to focus on one thing at a time more easily. And then third, position the transition. You know, as you go throughout the day, as you change tasks, as you change from work to home, back to work, set your intention, set your goal. How do you want to show up? What challenges you want to be prepared for? Um, you know, what, what's, what's, the what's the next best thing that you want to work on? So those are my tips. I hope that they help you, especially in the days today. I hope that this has been a valuable training for you all. Again, thank you for asking me to join. If you have any questions, you know, let me know. Um, I know that in the email that was sent out, there is the, um, the worker bee quiz that they, they mentioned there. So I created this quiz. I'm actually really proud of myself because this took, <laughs> I created it all myself. So it's like mm, little tech, tech, that's not my thing, but you know, I made it work. After a, a, about a year of market research, I um, created this quiz to, you can answer certain questions on your work style and it will match you to a type of worker bee, which, you know, that's fun. Everyone wants to know what kind of worker bee are you? Like a honey bee, like it's a different kind of honey bee. So it's like, you know, queen bee, guard bee, bot, like I didn't even know there's so many different kinds of bees until I started researching this. And then it matches you to that, which is fun. But then it also then gives you the key productivity and work mindset tips based on that type. So it's also got some value there. And I, and, um, I highly recommend checking that out and taking that quiz to give you some kind of more specific uh, tips for your work style that will help you throughout the day. And so with that, let me know if you have any questions. Nicole, that was really good. I, uh, it's amazing how... Uh, your journey is is absolutely amazing to me because I've known you for a long time. Um, very inspiring. I uh, I got out of my car during this. I had to I had to go do a quick check in for an employee to return to work, 
And then I went outside and I'm actually just breathing right outside the salon, sitting on the steps just Love because it. of you. But, um, but thank you so much for, for sharing your talent with us. Can you please add, if you have a link to the B test, can you put it into the chat room? Yes. And uh, I'm going to open it up for, for uh, feedback, questions. And there are a couple things in the chat room now, I think. Nicole, I had a, a question. I, I totally agree with Mike. I really enjoyed that. Uh, I love how you brought science into that because um, I'm, a, I'm a tech guy, right? I love the science of the brain and, and everything. Yeah. Um, when you're talking about take a break every hour because your mind sort of runs out of energy, um, do you also recommend any kind of brain training activities to extend that so you can go you know, 70 minutes, 80 minutes, 90 minutes? Or is well, it a sort of hard set? It's, you know, it's almost not hard set, I would say. But it, in, in general, it does show that, you know, your processing power starts to go down. And so the best way to really flex the, flex the muscle is to, even if, is to give yourself a break. Even if it's like a one minute or two minute break, yeah, I think it's, it is helpful to give yourself that reset. Um, but one of the best things for, for brain health, I would say, and being able to stay sharp, to stay aware of things. I think that's the other thing too, is like you start to like, after you've been working for a while, you, you kind of start to make mistakes because your brain is not as, as sharp or you're not seeing things the same way. And it is, it, it, there is a bit of like a, a brain learning that you can do to, the activities you can do to like flex that muscle and keep your brain sharp. One of those, some of those things are like learning new things. I think we've you know, learning new languages, new instruments. You know, surprisingly, people think like crossword puzzles and things are kind of good, but they're actually, they're not really a good brain exercise. They're fun, but they're not going to like flex that muscle as much. Um, but one of the best things that you can do to really help your brain power and your cognition is this idea of living aware. And so it's where, you know, if you ever like, had one of those days where you've driven somewhere and you don't ever remember driving there, you're basically kind of on autopilot. And so it's this idea of paying attention to all the details around you, kind of having your brain be ultra aware. And it does take some practice, but it just kind of like when you're standing in line at a coffee shop next time you're there, you just, rather than like, you know, zoning out, you're kind of like noticing the smells, noticing the people, noticing the different decorations, just kind of noticing what you notice around you and just being really aware of what's, even when you're driving, like how the lines go, the different trees and the cars that you pass, just kind of being in that moment and just noticing what you notice is actually a really great way to flex that muscle in your brain. And that, that can help carry cognition even all the way into old age. And they actually have done studies of looking at people who lived in this aware, uh, aware way, look at their brain versus people who live this less, was more like going through the motions, less aware type of lifestyle in their brains physically look different. People who live unaware and just sort of go through the motions and, you know, don't really take any time. They're just constantly distracted. They're always zoning out. Their brains start to atrophy. It's kind of a use it or lose it type of thing. So uh, great question. Thank you for that. Thank you. Nicole, I have a write-in comment. So I just received this from Rachel. Earlier I said, Rachel, any good questions for Nicole that we, that we could share with the team? Her co first comment was make sure to ask her about the worker bee quiz. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so Rachel knows about it. And, and, uh, and then yeah, she, she said, maybe ask, ask her to share some tips to stay motivated when working at home. Mm. So can you share some tips? For staying motivated working from yes. home yes absolutely so because yes there are those times when you just like don't feel like it <laughs> and you just are struggling and the first thing i can say is don't force it don't try to force yourself to feel motivated because the more you force your yourself or force your mind to think a certain way or force your brain, it, it, kind of, it kind of pushes it to the other way. It starts to feel, it's almost like this like fearful type of thing. Don't force it, honor it, honor it, honor the like, you know what, I'm not feeling it today and that's okay. I'm just, you know, I'm not super motivated and that's okay. And then what you can do is do something fun. So do something that will kind of light you up and maybe it's, you know, hopefully it's somewhat, maybe it's work related. Maybe it's something that you've been wanting to do, but you've kind of been putting off because it's not as important, but it might get you going. That's one thing you can do just to start to get the wheels turning, taking a break, you know, taking a break, having some water, having an apple or some bowl of cherries. Those are really good for your, for your mindset. Um, and the other thing that I always say is maybe like 
play pretend. Like we were all kids at one point and probably played house or played work or, and this might sound super silly because we're all like mature adults, right? But it, it really can help if you just sort of have that mindset of play and like, yeah, I'm just gonna, you know, do this, this couple little things here. It can sort of help to like get the wheels turning again and, and just take some of those bite, just do some of those bite-sized things that you can do that, you know, maybe make you feel a little fun and just, and have some grace. Like don't force it. I feel like you're not going to be as productive or as creative if you're trying to force it. So those are, those are my tips for that question. Good question. Thanks, Rachel. <laughs> yeah. With that is any other questions that you have team? And I love what Lori said here too. Yeah. Setting, setting roles, goals, and tasks for all, all your different roles as, as you know, if you're, as an employee, as a business owner, how, what your goals are as each of those roles and, and then kind of setting up, setting it up for success. I, I love that. So thanks Lori for sharing that. And thank you for the great comments. Those are awesome. I'm yeah. Anybody else want to jump in? I'm just going to say that if, if you all shift your mindset to think about opportunities that might um, be helpful for either your company that has employees or a business owner that you have, that you know, that uh, Nicole could come and speak to because that's what she does. She brings this, she brings this productivity and work mindset to anywhere, virtually or physically. Mm -hmm. So think about that. I'm actually sitting right outside of Anytime Fitness right now, which is right there. And I'm thinking that, wow, they have like 11 locations. They, they need to differentiate themselves. Maybe they would be interested in bringing those type of topics into their business. So that's what we do on Wednesdays is to help each other. But start thinking about that now. Nicole's taking the time to help us and let's help her as well. Well, thank you, Mike. Thanks for that. I'm a queen bee. All right, Maria. Ah, of course you yeah. are, Maria. <laughs> I knew that. So <laughs> any other final questions before you all get outside and take a real break? All right. I think well, we Nicole, all thank needed. I think we all needed to hear some uh, something encouraging and very positive. And and as you saw in the notes, Nicole, your your energy is you're vivacious, and it's contagious, and it's a great way to start a new day. So thank you. Well, thank you for that. Thank you. Good. I'm glad you all enjoyed it. I hope you all have an awesome Absolutely. Tuesday. Absolutely. Thank you for today. Yes. Thank you so much, Nicole. You're I'll very see well. everybody tomorrow at noon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a good one. Bye. -bye. Oh. Bye.